So welcome to Bait and Brews. This is on basic routes. Um, we do this every year. So hopefully basic students are here and climb leaders. Just to give ideas on routes maybe you haven't done before, we'll talk about beta for each route um, and take questions and answers. So we have um, four different groups of people presenting tonight. So what I'm gonna do is we're each gonna do our own presentation. I'll let each speaker to take questions at the end of their presentation. Um, and then if any other questions pop up at the end, we can open it up for just a general Q and A. Um, so, to get us started, please do keep yourself on mute um, until we're ready for questions, then feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, that way it just keeps it going for all of us. Um, also keep your videos turned off during the presentations just to save on bandwidth. Um, at the end, when we open up for a full Q&A, feel free to turn your videos on. That way we can see everyone's faces too. Um, all right. so. First off, I'm going to turn it over to Manisha. Thanks, Kai. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Let me share my screen. Okay. Well, everybody, thanks for thanks for being here late evening on uh, such a nice day outside. Um, the, so I'm going to talk about one of my favorite basic climbs, uh, Spickard and Readout. Many of the photos that you'll see today and many of the stories you'll hear, there's a lot of other people on this call that have been in the same climb that I was on. Uh, Patty is here, Venice is here. So uh, hopefully across the, across the bunch of us, we can answer questions you might have. We did this climb a little while ago. And the reason why I love this climb is it's just such a varied climb. The, uh, there's a lot of adventure. There was a, there was a lot of, uh, there's of course a lot of nature, but you get everything from, from forest, everything from forests to a little bit of bushwhacking to water, to mountains, to glaciers, to rock. Uh, so it was just a fun climb. Um, so I'll, I'll talk through some stories and then I have a lot of, I have a slide with like the li links to the logistics and I'm happy to answer any questions on that as well. So the first, uh, first story, actually, even before we go here, the first story I want to share is um, the, the adventure we had just getting to the, to the trailhead itself. So we had, um, we had the, beta that said go on this road it'll be a pretty bad road and when you see a yellow post marker turn and so we are like okay like we are going to find the yellow post marker and turn so you go on this forest road uh find the yellow post marker and we take a turn and the road is progressively getting worse and worse and worse and at some point it got so bad that uh, one of our teammates car would disappear under the under the uh, a wash out of the road and you would hear a massive scrape as it went on to the other side of the road. Uh, so we kept doing that for a while and finally we were like, we just give up. This is, this is, this is it. We are going to park here and we are going to get to the trailhead by walking for the rest of the way. And we got to the, we got to the trailhead and we started walking on, the, to get to the trailhead, we started walking on the road. And then we, Somebody looked at our looked at their GPS and said, "Hmm, we are going to we are going away from the trailhead." So none of us wanted to believe it. We just thought the GPS was wrong. So we still kept walking for a few minutes before we realized that we were actually on the wrong road. And so then we turned around. Obviously, did all of that uh, really crazy um, washout road stuff again. Came back, found the real yellow post, and turned there. And that road was so much better. So, I mean, it had potholes, but it had not, nowhere close to the kind of abuse that we put our cars through. So, you know, just watch out for the beta when you, when you get, to, uh, get to the trail, when you try to look for a trailhead, not just on this mountain, but in general. But this one seemed, seemed interesting and challenging for us. So we get out, we, um, we get into our, we get onto our trail, uh, our trail, this time is the right trail. 
we start walking the views are beautiful the day was really really amazing we were a little late starting out because of our adventure before the trail um but then we get to the this place called the deeper creek falls and that's that's this so if you've ever wondered what it me it feels like to stand in a car wash you want to do speaker and read out because that's basically what you're going to feel. you're going to get an experience of that so uh you can see on the bottom photo here a bunch of us are essentially coming up the hill uh on the waterfall and there are some hand lines and you can see the waterfall is on both sides so at some point you will do a stream crossing that is in the middle of the waterfall we are literally walking between two giant waterfalls and it's a lot of fun it's a lot of adventure because you have your multi day backpack on your on your back and it is a little slippery but there are hand lines in various places where it's really uh, really challenging but you know important to be careful in these areas but i thought the car wash was actually very refreshing because it was pretty hot by the time we got here so that was fun so then once we get past the car wash we got to our camp and so this is our camp and an interesting story around the camp so a couple of interesting things around the camp one was i think i counted like 14 waterfalls that were just falling off of the glaciers above us the sunset was incredibly beautiful even the picture you saw at the title of the slide was sunset from the camp we spent a few nights here because we were doing speckered the following day and then we were going to do read out the next day after from the same camp so that's what that was convenient because we could you know park in one place so we parked here we camped here we set up our camp and then a little bit after us a, a group of people walk over and they have ski boots on and the approach is not like you just you just saw the the waterfall but after the waterfall you really walk next to the waterfall and you have a pretty nice steep uh muddy terrain and we uh, ran into these uh, four people that had come up in their ski boots and uh they got here i think the following day they did speckered and then they just spent the rest of the time they decided not to do more so the rest of the time they hung out there they just did like yoga and stretching and one of them was a massage therapist so they he gave, he was giving massage to people uh, i mean to his group and it was just like we want that person in our group so uh, that was that was a lot of fun to just uh, catch up with them there and that was this was the year that stefa beg who's uh, i have a lot of her links in this uh, in this slide deck as well steph was doing uh, the chili wax slam which is ram custer spicker read out easy mocks and hard mocks those are the six on the bulger peaks if anybody is tracking or planning to do bulger peaks there are six of bulger peaks in this one place and you can set up two camps one here and one right by the readout glacier and you can essentially hit up the six peaks so lots of people try to do all of them in one long stretch because the approach is quite spicy um but anyway so that this was a brilliant sunset on one of the days but we had fantastic days on on all of our all of our trip there um and then so we did spicker which is further to the left here and then the next day we did readout and the the thing i loved about read out is the glacier is really mellow mm, but once you get past the glacier you land on the summit block the summit block is uh, the the approach from the glacier to the summit block is actually pretty steep so you kind of go up the start going up towards summit block and you hit the summit block uh so the first picture here is that approach to the summit block so it's pretty we unroped at that point because we were not on the glacier but the the snow is pretty steep so you hit the summit block and then my favorite part was the middle picture where uh, there's this uh, this uh, there's this thing called the cannon hole which you can see above Vinny's head um so you lead up which i mean he led up and you go through the cannon hole and then on the other side of the cannon hole is a it's a is a huge sheer drop 
And then behind you is a class three, class four scramble to get to the true summit. And so Vinny's, you can see in the last picture, Vinny's is standing there. Uh, he had set up a hand line so the rest of us could come up. And once you come up, you essentially go behind him and up the summit block, which is where this photo was taken from. Uh, it's just a gorgeous view. You get to look into the pickets. Um, the, and I think this is a really, we, we timed it really well, not by design, but it just happened that way that we had a really, uh, really good weather and the snow was still pretty high. So one of the things you'll see in both speaker readout and this chili wax area in general is the rock is really rotten. So you have to be very careful about what you touch. There were, there were times when I, there was one time when I remember touching a piece of rock and a disc just slips off and you have to pick it up and like put it somewhere so that it doesn't fall down. Uh, so it's not uncommon to have fairly rotten rock because it gets snow covered and then the snow melts out. Uh, but we got pretty good snow. So I thought uh, we had, we lucked out on, on the level of snow we got for both speaker and readout. I imagine this uh, snow finger to get into the cannon hole would be much harder if there was no snow on it. And this is a quick logistics side slide. Uh, there is a bunch of links here, so I'm happy to share this with Sky and uh, we can figure out where to post it so everybody can get to the links. But the links are on, you can go to the Steph Abeg, you can go to Steph's blog and she has a sticker and readout beta. It's a really, really good beta if you're looking for like route information. Mountaineers has a really nice uh, website uh, route uh, description as well. And then Christian did his uh, climb a few years after us, but he has beta, he has GPX for both uh, sticker and readout from camp. Um, the one thing I would call out is you do cross the border. So just you know, make sure that you are, you are looking up for what the current situation with Canada is. But this is uh, Steph's photo, both the potholes that, these were much more benign potholes. Unfortunately, I don't think I could find a photo of uh, the, the spicy road we went on, but these were the actual potholes that we ran into. Um, this was of course a few years ago, so I don't know how the conditions are now. And then that's the border crossing, which is you know, just a little obelisk. And so uh, I mentioned to you the, the car wash. So you'll hear sound, so don't get alarmed by it. But this one is uh, Patty's video of where, uh, where we were and what the car wash sounds like. So I'll play that now. But that's, that's it, that's, uh, that's kind of a quick view of what Stickered and Readout are, what the, the terrain looks like. Uh, really, really beautiful climb. Um, Beneath, Patty, anybody else who has done the climb, if you want to add anything else. All right, awesome. Um, does anyone have any questions that they want to ask about that right now? If not, we can bring it back up. Um, oh, this is a good one. All right, from Rio. Besides the snow, are there any other cruxes on the route that we should be wary of? Um, any Berg's runs, anything like that? Yeah, so uh, Rio, the Speaker does tend to have, I don't know if it actually becomes a bullshit run, but that does tend to have a, a like there, it's nothing like Olympus where if you're the, the bridge is out, you can't get through it just, I think it get, just gets progressively worse if the snow levels are really low and the top of speaker, the speaks, the, the mm, summit block of speaker is kind of really, really jossy rock. Uh, and then I wanna say on uh, stream crossings, we didn't really have too much trouble stream crossing, even if it was high snow and it was a really warm day and lots of water was flowing out. 
you could you could find places where you could cross the stream there is a the trail actually leads you to an area where there's a little bit of a flat area it feels really weird to be walking in the middle of two waterfalls so you your natural instinct is to try and go to the other side of the second waterfall so but you have to kind of be in the middle and then climb up between the two waterfalls and there's a question of did you need to bring any crocs or sandals for the river crossing or you just went in your boots uh patty actually already answered that so we oh, did I our trip in july and uh I don't think any of us had carried crocs. I cannot remember if we some of us might have taken off our boots and just crossed in our spare socks or something. But uh I think we were able to find places where you could hop over some rocks and get past. You just have a heavy pack so it's a little more um you know interesting to hop hop on rocks. We did this trip in 4 days. and three nights the first night was our approach the second day we did spickered and back the third day we did read out and back and then the fourth day we walked out so awesome cool thanks manisha so if any other questions for that climb come up feel free to keep them in the chat and we'll get to another q and a at the end um but i am going to move on to kangaroo temple so let's see all right Can you guys see that okay? Okay. Um so Kinger Temple this is a 5 6 3 to 4 pitch climb in Washington Pass. Um this is a map of Gaia of the approach. So it basically starts off at the hairpin turn in Washington Pass and then you hike up from there, go up and over a ridge and then traverse onto the other side to the actual peak and you can't see the peak from the road so it's a little tricky um once you get over you do see it though uh this is a ton of route description i'm not going to read through all of this but i'll also share my slides and this links to the mountain project description um it is three pitches of actual rock climbing the fourth pitch is a scramble with an optional um i think 57 or 58 pitch that you could pitch out if you want to with most basic students i would recommend doing the scramble unless they're stronger climbers because it is a lot harder um so this image shows just the route it's the first pitch second pitch is red blue is the third pitch and then the scramble is this pink section this yellow is the optional fourth pitch which from there if you want to get to the true summit is then another little bit of scrambling Um this picture is also from Mountain Project. This was awesome just showing the route and then the rappels which is really helpful. Um and the route goes up to the left side. This other right side is what this is saying is 57 plus. Um so not a basic climb on that route. All right. So the approach um like I said it's from the hairpin turn on highway 20. Um you're basically hiking through a boulder field for a bit and then hiking up a faint trail to gain the ridge line. Um this is another version of a map showing that. So all of this um section that looks like you're going through the trees is pretty flat. You start to go up and then you hit the ridge line and traverse sideways. Um once you hit the steep section, so these pictures kind of show this is the flat part in the very beginning. Um and then the second picture has a nice view of Liberty Bell. Um but this is where it starts to climb and then it does kind of continue gaining elevation for a while. Um this was once we crested over the ridge this is the first view so this peak here is Kangaroo Temple and it's the first time that you can actually see it um this section of the approach is kind of hard to follow as long as you're looking for a trail you should be fine um this is just kind of showing that mountain project picture of the route comparing it to what you'll actually see when you get over there um to me the crux of the route 
is a scramble um, to get to the base of the climb and not because it's difficult at all, but because there's a ton of loose rocks. So if you're doing this with students, we had them helmet up uh, before we started scrambling to the base and there was rock fall. So just be aware of that and keep people out of the way, have one person go up at a time. Um, from there, the first pitch is pretty easy climbing, it gets you to actually bolted anchors. Um, so this is Joanna at that anchor after the first pitch. Um, from there, everything else is gear anchors and the belay from the final third pitch is a tree that's already slung. And um, this is what most people would say is the crux is the step around um, starting off pitch number three, which is not difficult at all, but mentally it can be a little taxing, especially for students. There's a lot of exposure. Um, and this is like, this is showing the belay. You can't actually see his anchor, but there's this huge flake here that fits really well. Um, I think want to say like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 cans. Um, great place to belay from. That belayer can then still see around the corner to see their leader, which is awesome. Um, and from here, there's an optional piece like right by his feet where the leader can place a number four cam if you want to carry that up. Um, it really just protects your follower. So this is showing pitch three, um, and these are pictures I took of Garrett as he's leading. So you can see right here, um, this is his belayer. And so she's able to actually see him doing this traverse, but then he'll cut up into this corner and then she won't be able to see him anymore. Um, this traverse is protect protectable, even though it looks like there's not much there. There is space for one cam someplace down here by these boulders. Um, it's easy climbing. You can walk across it. Mentally, it is just a little bit scary. It's a drop off. You're up really high. Um, a lot of times for the follower, it can be scary. Once they take out any pieces, they could swing. Um, but other than that, it's, it's really fun climbing. You can walk. There's no handholds, but you can balance a little bit. It's very slappy. Um, and from there, so you finish out into this corner, which is not quite a crack. Um, you can get some hand jams in, but it's very flaring. And you basically climb up about to the top of this crack section, and then you'll just cut over and there's a tree that you'll belay at. Um, and then getting to the summit, this is Elaine pretty much topping out to where I'm belaying her at a tree. And from there, it's it says third, third class um, scrambling. I would say it's like second class. You're basically just walking up to the summit um, with that optional fourth pitch, which I've never led. Garrett did lead it and thought it was very fun. Um, again, Five seven five eight. it protects well. And this is a view from the summit. It is a really beautiful climb. I highly recommend it. Um, and more summit views. This photo was taken by Karen, who I think is on this call. Um, this was last summer, so that's why we're all buffed and masked up because it was during COVID. Protects well until the end. Then you're in kind of this weird slap. Yeah, I don't know if you guys could hear that. Garrett said that last pitch protects well until the end. And then you're in like a slab section. You kind of just have to get over. Yeah, kind the of top. Be out of flake. Yeah. Um, so from the summit, there is a little bit of like a walk slash scramble to get to the rappel anchors. Um but once you get there, this first anchor for your first rappel from the summit is the three bolts. Um, so super strong, really easy to set up the rappel. There's always been webbing when we've done it. Um, it can be a little awkward if this is a student's first climb. It can be a little scary. It's not a sit and spin, but it is definitely like a weird, you're sitting to set up your rappel and then you're stepping over the edge. Um, so quite the first rappel. Second and third repels, totally fine. This 
picture on the right, I do not recommend repelling the gully. <laughs> um, I did. We had students that wanted that set up um, and it was a total mistake. You will kick rocks down. There are wrap rings. Don't repel it. If students need anything, I would set up a hand line and let them like press it down the hand line because then they can use their hands a little bit more too. Um, but repelling that gully is just, it's a nightmare. There's lots of loose rock. Um, if you decide to go that route, get everyone else out of the way. If you don't decide to do a repel, just have each student kind of go one at a time and then get way out of the way before the next person comes down. Um, and then you hike out, which was about three to four hours to get back to the cars, depending on how fast your group is. The gully is quite steep and kitty litter, so that took us a long time just to get down from the gully. Um, all right, cool. Are there any questions? Let's see if I can see the chats. I'm gonna stop sharing. All right. Cool. Doesn't, I don't see any questions. So I am now going to turn it over to Paul. Hey, thanks, Guy. I was looking for the, the unmute button there. I get to spend my day on Google Meet instead of Zoom. So this is an unfamiliar interface. Um, hey, so this, uh, this is about four for the fourth. Um, Ben Chapman and I had, had been talking about uh, doing North Ridge of Baker in early July in 2020. Um, you know, I, I personally wasn't feeling particularly ready to get off the couch and go ice climbing. Um, so we looked for a more moderate uh, objective and um, Ben got the idea of doing four peaks uh, in the Tatouche uh, for the fourth. Uh, let's see, there we go. Um, so the plan was to visit Unicorn, Foss, Castle, and Pinnacle. And if you were looking over from uh, Paradise side, that would be left to right, uh, which was our direction. Um, Katush apparently means rest in Chinook. Um, I don't think there's any one of the peaks there that looks like it, but there's apparently one someplace else that uh, where the name's drawn from. Uh, just jokingly say right here is the big mountain across from the Tatouche. Lots of fun things to do in the Tatouche. Uh, climbing, skiing, you know, there's some intermediate uh, objectives, Lover's Lane, uh, you know, can be really fun. Um, another part of our plan was to keep things COVID compatible. So mellow climbing, uh, things we can do in our boots, make it one day so no camping. Uh, no hanging belays uh, and a small group. I had uh, Hadley and Kevin along. And then the, the stats for the trip was 9.2 miles, uh, about 4,500 feet of gain. And that doesn't count uh, the little bit of road walking to get back. So here's a view. This is actually um, from last weekend, uh, but looking over, you can see Unicorn, which is just about 7,000, and then Foss, uh, Castle, and Pinnacle, um, you know, all of which are lower. Um, so first off is Unicorn. Uh, it's named for this uh, sort of horn-like feature that you can see when you look at the, uh, the peak. I was disappointed to find out that's not what you climb. Um, what you climb is this uh, you know, feature there on uh, the left-hand side. Lots of ways to get up. I think Mountain Project has three or four listed. Um, the primary one kind of goes up, um, you know, a, a line on the, the left third there. Um, goes at five, six ish, uh, nuts and finger size pro. Uh, there's a 5.0, uh, you know, more kind of blocky open book uh, over on the right side that protects with. Uh, BD number three and number four. Um, I brought nuts and finger size pro thinking about the five, six sprouts. So that was a scramble. Uh, don't recommend, but it wasn't that bad. Um, crux of 
this part of the climb was uh, getting from the kind of the saddle area between Unicorn and West Unicorn uh, up kind of around the corner. And there you can see there's snow and a moat and some rock. And just getting up and down that uh, safely was uh, the most difficult thing. We'll say we were a little surprised uh, on the 4th of July to have a really great hard uh, crampon snow all the way from uh, the lakes up to Unicorn. That didn't last through the day, um, got nice and soft by the end, uh, but we were super happy to have the crampons even in July. Um, great view from Unicorn. We got a, a little bit of, of a picture of the mountain with the clouds clearing. I remember the day kind of coming and going, but that's one of the great things about the Tatouche. So second stop was Foss. Um, so you walk down and then pretty much just walk a ridge. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of the rainier area scrambles. You can take it off in your uh, uh, beef bagger. It's like a lot of rainier area scrambles in that it looks imposing um, before you're actually on it, but there's always a pretty obvious path uh, to get up. And we had either uh, you know, boot tracks in the snow or um, some kind of worn paths to, to lead us up there at the top. So fun, fun spot and it's on the way to Castle, so it's, uh, it's a bonus peak. Um, third stop was Castle. Um, you know, fun, fun climb, short. Um, you know, you, you need maybe one piece or two pieces of uh, genuine protection to get up there. You can put more in to amuse your follower. Uh, it's pretty fast. Um, you know, I think we were, we were up and down in, uh, in not very long at all, including a little bit of extra scrambling at the top. Um, but fun objective, nonetheless. Um, fourth stop was Pinnacle, um, and Pinnacle was absolutely the spiciest uh, of the day. It's uh, marked on Mountain Project as uh, fourth class rated R. You know, maybe PG thirteen with some some extra rough language or something. It's 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 probably the the R is fair. Um, you can see the the. Summit area is flat, you know, convenient, great place to take a rest, but the crux is right there. Uh, got Ben leading up, heading, and it's uh, kind of polished and cleaned off, and there is absolutely no place to put any kind of protection whatsoever. So um, just got to climb it and get up and down and be careful. Uh, here's the track. Uh, you can see the, the start from the trailhead. Uh, over there, the Snow and Bench Lakes Trail. Um, quick trip up, 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 and then the little hook around a unicorn. Um, back down, hike over to Foss, hike over to Castle, hike over to Pinnacle. We went up the standard route on the uh, kind of southwest ridge there. And then the walk out. Um, and super fun day. Um, you know, great to be able to visit four peaks um, and, uh, you know, be in and out without any camping. That's last slide. Happy to have any questions. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Sure. Thank you. That's a really fun route. I do. I guess I do have one question. Do you think if you did it again, would you go the same way you went or the opposite direction? I would definitely go the same way. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think the, um, you know, the, the hike out from Pinnacle was uh, much more pleasant. I think that the hike out from Unicorn would have been, yeah. it's also nice to get the, um, you know, the, the most climbing, climbing out of the way at the, the start of the trip when everybody's freshest. That's true. Yeah, we did it the opposite direction and yeah, getting down 
<laughs> Turning down from unicorn was not, not super fun. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Craig and Kelly. Oh, Craig, you're muted. Hey, I'm a pro at this. Um, so my name's Craig. I'm going to be talking about our Ruth and Icy trip that um, Kelly and I did a couple years ago. Uh, let me get my screen share. Going. Let me know when you can see it. Uh, so uh, Ruth and Icy, it's a cool climb because you get to get two summits in. Um, Ruth is something you can do in A, but it's but Icy a little bit too far for that. So it's nice to be able to get one summit in and then get some time to camp and then get another summit in the next day. Um, this one has pretty stellar views of Shuxon. Um, you're basically right next to Shuxon and it's staring at you the whole time. So as long as the weather is, is clear, you'll have great views. Um, the glacier travel is pretty mellow. So I wouldn't say that this climb is super strenuous or anything. Um, it's like pretty low angle. The only thing that we had on Ruth is you can kind of see it on the photo here. This is Ruth um, right here, that there's like a bunch of bear glacier that we had to navigate around. And we went in mid August. So it was a little bit late season. Um, everything went fine. It was just like, we just had to kind of navigate around this a little bit. Um, and there was not really much in terms of crevasses or anything like that. It was just like, that was the most difficult part to navigate over, which was not that difficult. And then also there's a little bit of rock scrambling um, on the other side of Ruth, um, when you come down towards Icy and then the final bit of Icy has like a more, um, you, you've uh, put a hand line in is probably ideal for a basic group. It wasn't super hard scrambling, but it was nice to have that, that line set up. Um, and so just kind of show you the, where it's at. Um, let me get that out of the way. Uh, so it's about almost a three hour drive. It's certainly over three hours when you have to make the stops. You need, you do need to stop at the ranger station here in the Glacier Public Service Center is the ranger station um, and get a permit if you plan to camp and you camp side of Ruth, you're technically in the North Cascades um, area and they want you to um, get that permit. Um, we didn't have able getting a, we didn't see anyone else camping um, we didn't run into too many people even on a, on a weekend, on a nice weekend in August. So I don't expect you to have full, but. You got above Hennigan Pass. What's that? The campground at Hennigan Pass was busy. Oh yeah. The, the parking lot area at the like, Hannigan area over here, this was like, it, there was a lot of cars parked there. One of the problems is the, um, that park, the actual park, parking lot was washed out, but you had to basically park on the roads. Um, and so there was like a lot of cars on the roads. Um, and then this also kind of shows you like how close you are. So Ruth Icy is here and like Shuxon is just like right there. And then you can't see Baker throughout the trip, but it's it's over on the other side to kind of show you an idea. And then Chair 9 Pizza is a delicious place to get pizza on the way back that you should stop. Um, and here's the actual trip with the GPS on Google Earth and the um, elevation loss. So like there's a fair up and down. Um, but it's pretty pretty gentle, pretty much the whole way. So like you you start off in, in this valley, which is pretty wooded, and you go up and you see on the ocean profile, um, like once you get up to to past the wooded area and the alpine, this is all pretty flat here. And then as you get up to Ruth, it kind of peaks. This is the top of Ruth. Um, and then when you come down, you're camping just here before the elevation drops. So like this is this is your camp spot here. So it's it's five or six mile um, approach for day one. And then the rest of it is all through day two. So the day two is quite a bit longer than day one. Um, and the thing that kind of eats up time on day um, on day one is there's this goalie that we'll talk about here in a second. Um, so here's the start where you're going through that valley, super uh, wooded and um, very green, um, super cool to go through. 
Uh, the day that we did it, it was pretty cloudy. So we actually didn't get too many views. Um, there was predicted to be maybe a little bit of rain and then the next day was supposed to be good. So we decided to chance it and I'm glad we did. Um, but the first day there's like absolutely no views and we were in the clouds, um, which made it cool hiking. Like it was nice and cool, but it was not, not, so, not so great views. Um, and this is after you come up that valley that I was talking about, there's this kind of, it's kind of an infamous gully that you go. Uh, so if I go back to this view here, um, this is the Hannigan Pass here uh, in the middle uh, where like, it's wooded here. And this steep section here is this gully. It, it's when it's um, really warm and muggy, it's kind of miserable, but it, it's not, it doesn't go on forever. It's, it's long enough to go in, but it's not too terrible. I think it would be worse if there was like, a bunch of rain and it was wet because um, you have to go over these roots and it's not it's not very consolidated dirt and that would be kind of a pain um, but that photo here this is basically us kind of waiting up you know the trees down below and you're getting into the alpine um, and then these are more when you're at the top and you're making that traverse like you you go on this long traverse for for a while um, and the views just open up uh, on the way back, it was amazing because we had clear weather and you could see everything. Um, on the way there, it was just like, you know, you could see a little bit of stuff. Um, it was a cool area, but you didn't get the good views. And then this is kind of a snapshot showing um, towards Ruth. And the top left is the, um, the base where we did a little bit of rock scrambling. And you can see the Bear Glacier here you had to kind of navigate over. We put on our crampon somewhere over here um, and then just headed straight up. Uh, to get off of the Bear Glacier, didn't do any traversing, just kind of went straight up onto the softer snow. Um, and then you can just kind of walking on here. So this big feature in the foreground ahead of us is the same rock here. And so the clouds were just like coming and going the whole day. Um, and then a couple more photos from that. And then in, in the bottom right, um, this is actually the camping area. And there's another great photo later on that shows like how amazing the spot is. Like here it was like, okay, we showed up and we're basically in a ping pong ball. You could see just clouds around you swirling around. Um, and it didn't, it was, it was not super great looking campsite at first. Um, and there was, we think we were talking about it and don't remember um, what the water situation was, but we didn't remember uh, to um, melt any snow. So we think we found a spot, but I don't remember it too specifically. And then for the next day, we woke up early and um, there's a, a couple notes for this one. One is our, our in the top left, it shows where our camp was. There's a couple ways to get down um, towards Icy. There's this goalie that you're parked next to at the camp. So you can see this goalie here um, going up on the other side between these two mounds. Um, there's a lot of trip reports where people go into this goalie, but what you can do is there's this shoulder on the um, right side here. You can see a couple people heading up. You, if you go past the goalie, which is really tempting to go in, um, you can hit up this kind of intermittent trail system on the right of the shoulder, and then you can just like head down. It's probably like a third class mostly second class, but some third class sections of just basically just walking through intermittent trails to get a taste of um, what you end up traversing over to get to Icy. Um, and then once you get to the bottom of this, like I'm facing towards camp, if I like turned all the way back around, you something like this in the middle photo where there's just like a bunch of strewn boulders around and you have to just kind of find your way through the boulder field um, on a straight traverse all the way to the glacier at Icy. Um, and on this right side, this is a photo we took on the way back because the views are a lot better by then. But you can see like you just kind of um, find a path on the boulder field. And then I drew a line here where the approximate route was and you just kind of head up towards where Icy is. Um, and then the bottom left is a picture of Shuxon when you're on, on Icy. Um, and then the last thing you do uh, once you traverse up on the on this photo up here, you traverse all the way up to where the base of these rocks are. Um, and then you get to the other side and you effectively just like take a hard left. Um, and it's one of those things that a lot of people will probably be familiar with where you like see this mountain that looks like you, it's too steep to climb or anything. And I remember we were looking around and, and uh, we're not sure that that was going to be the right direction to go because it looked too steep and too imposing, but it turned out like we 
sniffed around a little bit and found, okay, that's where we're supposed to go. And of course we walked up to it and it was basically like a scramble um, as happens in a lot of these mountains that we climb. So um, this is basically coming up and doing that let hard left turn to get to the base of the final scramble. And this is it. We scrambled up quite a bit of the um, of the section, and then we left the last maybe hundred feet to set up a hand line. So on the left is uh, students starting to head up. Um, there's a line in the middle here, and people are pressing on. It's not very hard climbing at all. I think I placed like one piece of pro or something. Um, and then this is like you know looking down from the top, like it's yeah not super long. Um, there's some loose rock and everything, and we just kind of were just you know really aware of it and made sure that the people who were going to be going up next were um, on deck, and people who were not were kind of hiding behind the um, other areas to not get hit with anything. Um, but it wasn't too bad. And then here we are on the summit. Amazing views are starting to open up. The clouds um, start to clear. It was a pretty great day. Um, the summit is not like super duper large, but we had six people on our crew and it, everybody fit fine. Like it wasn't too bad. Um, and then this is looking in the top right, you're looking back down through that same glacier that we passed. And then in the bottom right is Shuxon here. I took a lot of pictures of Mount Shuxon. And then the views of Leo by this time. So this is some of the stuff we did just any of it before. Um, top left is heading down icy glacier super mellow, like it didn't get any steeper than that. Um, and then in the middle is our campsite, which is like pretty stellar campsites. So this is one you wanna do when the other good and you have views, like you wanna see these views. Um, and then the same thing on the right is like, we're walking out, it was just pretty awesome. And then in the bottom left is Ruth. So this is looking back towards Ruth, um, you go on this, field over here, the snow field, and then you eventually, there's like some path that goes up this kind of dirt section here. Um, and then the way out, more beautiful views that we had, couldn't see before. Um, in the bottom left, you see the long traverse. So like, this is the really long traverse that, you, that we did, very flat, and that's when the views kind of open up on the way in. Um, just a beautiful area, and then the first were out, so it was very pretty, it's awesome, awesome spot to be. And so my final thoughts on this one, definitely use, you wanna go out here when the weather's good. Um, Ruth is an option that people will do for a single day glacier climb, but it's three hour drive roughly. Um, you don't need any permits to do that, but like it's pretty common. We didn't see a ton of people on this climb altogether, but we saw a few people like doing Ruth only. Um, and it's long enough, it was 18 miles. So total, um, and we did it late enough season that we didn't really need our mountaineering boots the whole time. So um, we ended up using trail runners and then packing our mountaineering boots and like switching on and off, um, which is pretty nice to do that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Kelly, did you want to add anything else? I don't think so. No? So yeah, is there any questions from the chat? Looks like one about what month you were there. Uh, so we did it in mid-August. I think it was like 19th May um, in 2019, yeah. Awesome. Do you recommend August just for the glacier? Um, I, I heard different things. One thing is that that goalie that comes up from Hannigan Pass, um, if it's snow filled, you just kind of walk up it. So I read some trip reports that people were excited about doing that and not having to go through the, the goalie. Um, but I kind of, I kind of liked it that there was, there wasn't too much snow and we could just use our trail runners, but I don't know the snow travel can, can make things a little easier in some ways. Awesome. Okay. Another question on food storage. Did you use bear cans or bear bags? Did you need to? Uh, yeah, so they ask you at the ranger station about your food storage options. Um, if I remember right, they were more concerned about rodents. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I think what we ended up doing was... Smell-proof bags. Yeah, I think we had smell-proof bags. Um, actually, after that trip, I think we went out and got um, this like rat sack thing because um, we've had some other encounters I don't where, where mice will get in your car and everything. So we got this wrap bag um, and we got a whole bunch of smell proof bags and stuff. So, but 
yeah, I'd, I'd bring um, your rat sack if you have one and, um, or if you want to bring a bear canister, you could do that, but they'll ask you about that at the ranger station. Awesome. Are there any other questions for Ruth and Icy? Great. Well, I'm going to open up if anyone else has any other questions for any of the presentations. Um, put those into the chat now. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you to everyone that presented. This was definitely a short and sweet beta and bruise. Um, I think we're used to everyone presenting for quite some time. So we cut everyone short at 15 minutes apiece. But thank you to everyone that presented. Um, really great routes. I know I learned something. I definitely want to do Ruth and I see this year. That looks awesome. Um, and if anyone else has any other questions that come up, um, feel free to, I think Twyla is who sent out their original email. So you can email her and she can reach out to any of the speakers. And we'll also make sure to get all of the PowerPoints and have her put those up on the event page so that you guys can access them if needed. Um, so you know, a lot of us did link to things um, that way. You can get whatever you need. All right, awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Hope you have a good night.